All right, so uh, to kick us off, uh, today's topics that we'll be covering are our V2 REST API connectors, uh, which we've just released uh, in beta. Um, we'll do a quick demo of that, um, and we'll of course leave time at the end for, for any questions about this or anything, really. Um, so to kick us off, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce uh, this new endpoint that we've released. So this is the lines and connectors endpoint uh, currently marked as experimental, um, which really just means beta. So um, you know this will move on to more formal availability soon. And um, in the meantime, it's, it's on production and available for use uh, for people to try it out. So a connector for anyone um, who might not know is just simply something like this that connects two uh, items on a board. So it's a line or an arrow uh, or something like that. So before we get started, um, I'll just quickly kind of highlight the different endpoints that we have for lines and connectors. So you can create, read, update, and delete um, a line using our REST API. Um, and, and eventually this functionality will also come to our web SDK, but today we're just focusing on demoing the the REST API. So actually, I can uh, start us off with a quick example. So I'll start here with a, a blank Miro board. And I'm going to use uh, Postman to demo some of these API requests. So if we look at our documentation here, the, the idea here is that we're going to connect two items. So the first thing I want to do is create two shapes on the board. And then we'll connect those two shapes. So I'm going to start with our uh, create shape endpoint. Uh, so I've got a request here ready in Postman for me. I'm going to create just a, a basic rectangle here. First, uh, in Postman, I'm just going to create a rectangle here. So I've already got an OAuth access token, and I've placed that in here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit create. And we see I've got a, a simple square here that says hello. And in the API response, you'll notice that we get an ID for this shape. And so we'll use this in a little bit, but just keep that in mind. I'm going to then create a second shape. And this one will be a triangle. And this is just a very basic shape as well. Now I'm going to use the ID from this triangle and the ID from this rectangle to create a connector. So as a quick summary here, we have the new connectors endpoints. And you'll notice here in the URL path, it says v2 experimental. Um, so we'll want to adjust that when we make an API request. The rest of our v2 endpoints will just have you know, the standard kind of v2 path URL. So that's how you know this is kind of an experimental beta feature. So let's go ahead and give this a try. I'm going to create a third request to create this connector here. And these are just some of the parameters that are required. So we need to specify an end item and a start item. And the IDs for these will be the IDs that we just got back from our shapes. So I'm going to connect this rectangle, put this as the start item ID. And the triangle, I'll grab this as well, put this as the start or end. And we'll give this a shot. So if we send this request to the V2 experimental endpoint for connectors, we should get an arrow connecting these two shapes. Um, so this is a very, you know, very basic example, but the idea here is that uh, the release of connectors enables you to, you know, use more sophisticated use cases um, from a REST API perspective to create things like charts and diagrams and associate items on a board, add more structure to things, um, and it's something that we had in V1 and we now have in V2. Um, you know, there are different properties for the connector as well. You can, you know, style it however you'd like. Um, there's a lot of different parameters here. You can change, for instance, you know, an arrow to just being a regular line by, you know, putting none for the end stroke cap property. Show a quick example of that. Um, yeah, and a lot of it is just, you know, playing around with these parameters and, and seeing what you'd like to do. Uh, one thing I want to call out here is, you know, you do need to specify a, a start item and an end item. So it's not currently possible to create just a free form line based on coordinates. Uh, the workaround for this would be to 
you know, create two very small items on the board. Uh, you could create like a very tiny circle that's nearly, you know, invisible to the naked eye. And then you could create a second one and connect those two to kind of hack a freeform line, so to speak. Um, but as of right now, the uh, support for connectors is that there is a prerequisite of having a start item and an end item already on the board. So just pause right there for a sec. Could I, yeah. could I create an element that has the same color as the background of the board? That way it's effectively invisible. Yeah, that, that's a great suggestion. Um, right. That should be possible, I think. Uh, if you use like the, the color picker to match the, the background, um, yeah, definitely. Because I can see for the line, the, the color style is just a hex code. So I think it should be possible if you can set a, a custom color for the object itself, which I assume we can, right? Yeah, actually, you know what? Why don't we give it a try? I'm going to just see if I can get the color of the board here. Um, so let's see. I have to use something a different shape, maybe. Um, although I don't know if it'll let me select the actual board. Um, the closest thing I can think of is if, you know, you had, you could create like a giant shape essentially for the whole board, or at least a, a large portion of it, the part that you're using and use that to set the basis for things. Um, let's see here. But I mean, the first color in the color picker is transparent, right? Uh, the F, 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 is that what you mean? No, no, I mean the, in the actual um, like color picker with the preset colors, the first one that strike through, I think it's, it's transparent, no? Uh, like this yeah. one? Yeah, this one. Yeah, so if we choose that color both for the stroke and the fill, then, then it will be invisible, no? Yeah, yeah, I guess I'm just, is there a hex code associated with with a transparent option here? That's my question. Mm, right, if, if we if we can set the transparent color from the API, that, yeah. I, that I'm not sure. Yeah, so that's, that's an open question, I guess. Um, I'll have to play around with that a bit more, but um, it does seem like it, it should potentially be possible as long as we can get a hex code to present it in the API. But great suggestion. Um, yeah, no, I was also gonna say like, you know, you could create like a giant square or something uh, of any color um, and, you know, do that as well along the same lines. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out uh, in this session was uh, our migration resources. So uh, you might remember that in V1, which uh, will be retired in the future, uh, we did have a widget type of line, um, which did very similar things. Um, so as part of our migration guide, we have um, called this out in terms of uh, what to look for um, when migrating to V2. So if you go to our REST comparison guide, you will see a section here on lines and connectors that basically just gives a, a kind of high level overview of um, what the, the methods or endpoints were called in V1 and how they were used uh, compared to V2. Um, and the same in our reference guide, except here you'll actually find uh, very specific code examples to uh, compare. So for instance, um, where are we? Connector, yep. So in V1, it was create widget of type line, and this is what the request looked like. And in V2, it's create connector um, with this experimental endpoint at the moment. This will, you know, at some point just be plain old V2, but for right now, uh, this is how you would submit this request. So yeah, these are uh, basically your starting points for using lines and connectors and understanding, you know, how to get the same functionality you might've had in V1 uh, in V2. And yeah, I mean, this was most of what, uh, you know, we had planned for today in terms of just covering new content, but 
as always, these office hours are open time for, for anyone to join and ask really any questions about the platform, our web SDK, our REST API, um, or anything like that. And uh, we, we usually record these and uh, post the videos on our YouTube channel, uh, Miro for Developers, afterwards. Um, so I can share that as well, just so you guys know where to find um, these, these sessions afterwards. So if you go to this channel here, Miro for Developers, which you can search uh, on YouTube, you'll find a playlist uh, called Developer Q&A Sessions. So you can find, for instance, uh, last week's session here, where we covered you know, uh, V1 to V2 migration resources and our developer roadmap. Um, so afterwards, we'll post this session um, you know, with the demo of connectors and, and things like that. So the idea here is we'll have a pretty uh, consistent running list of you know, new content, things to discuss, and just kind of what's going on um, on the developer platform.